Hugh Hefner was nine years old when he started his first newspaper, selling it for a penny a copy. It was the start of a career that changed American society and made him a global celebrity. His Playboy empire brought sex and nudity into the American mainstream when it was launched in the 1950s, and Hefner reveled in the fame it brought him. The concept is essentially the same. It represents, you know, personal, political, economic freedom. I think that symbol is there and, and uh, obviously represents sexual freedom and represents a, a lifestyle, an upscale lifestyle. Famously, Playboy's interviews were often as revealing as its photos of celebrities. And when Hefner moved the empire to Los Angeles, his Playboy mansion became home to everything his business represented. The parties and the lifestyle portrayed on TV there helped fuel the mythology around Hefner. Pipe smoking, silk pyjama wearing, surrounded by stars. He lived there for four decades, selling the house last year on the condition that he could spend the rest of his days there. That he did, dying at the mansion, aged 91, surrounded by his family. In a statement, his son Cooper said, My father lived an exceptional and impactful life as a media and cultural pioneer and a leading voice behind some of the most significant social and cultural movements of our time in advocating free speech, civil rights and sexual freedom. But Playboy's treatment of women always made Hefner a target for criticism, something he dismissed. He'd long since given up the day-to-day -day running of the empire that made him famous, that he believed played a part in the sexual revolution. Properly understood, Playboy and the Playboy clubs were the end of sexism. Yeah. In other words, the truth of the matter is the real sexist era came before Playboy. Mm -hmm. And Playboy played a very real part in changing all of that. Six years ago, he told a newspaper he'd already paid for his final resting place in a tomb next to that of Marilyn Monroe. Greg Milam, Sky News, Los Angeles.